Today we're going to see how to use a buck converter module to step down voltage in an Arduino project and you'll see how a buck converter can play a significant role in power management. No matter what you're connecting to Arduino, you always want to look at that item's data sheet to make sure the operating voltage and current don't exceed the limitations of Arduino. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at our module that we have here today. Today we're going to take a look at this 5 amp buck converter and it's a step down voltage regulator that we're going to use with our Arduino. The reason you'd want to do this is because we're connecting two servo motors to the Arduino. Now this could go for any any type of component or device that you connect to your Arduino that requires more current than the Arduino can supply. Buck converters are nice to have when you need to regulate and supply current efficiently. They're designed to step down higher input voltage to a lower output voltage with high efficiency typically somewhere around 80 or 90 percent, maybe even more, and this efficiency reduces power loss and heat generation, which is important to managing current effectively. Under heavy load, each of these servos can pull up to one amp of current at five volts or five and a half volts, so that is much more than the Arduino can handle. So what we're going to do is use a battery, a 12 volt battery, for external power, and as you can see right here, it can supply up to four amps of current, which is perfectly fine for what we're doing. We'll plug the battery into the input of the buck converter and then we'll step down the voltage to, well let's do 5 volts. We'll run the servo motors on 5 volts. That way we don't have to worry about damaging our microcontroller. I purchased this on Amazon and uh, it came in a pack of two and it was about $14 I believe. Um, here we have a display, a three digit display and this is where your voltage will appear. On either side you have a button. On this side this is the on off button for the display and on this side this will uh, cycle the input voltage and output voltage on your display right here. You see an LED right there that says input or in and then an LED right here that says out. You cycle back and forth by pressing this button and it will light up for input and output. You'll see it right there on the display. So uh, up here is the voltage regulator. You turn this gold screw right here clockwise to step up the voltage and then uh, counterclockwise to step down the voltage and that will appear in real time uh, down here on the display. Over here you have the input and it uh, handles a range of 4 to 38 volts and then the output uh, handles a range of 1.25 volts to 36 volts. It also came with a heat sink which you put right here to help dissipate uh, heat that may occur and uh, it came with these standoffs here so you can attach them to a backboard for support. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to use this uh, power connector here. I use these all the time to plug um, either regulated power into or in this case today this battery into. They're great and if you don't have any they're definitely worth keeping around for your projects. Now we're going to go ahead and put the leads in here and the positive in there. And it comes with tiny screws, so it'll help if you uh, invest in a decent screwdriver. I'm trying to uh, not get in your way here. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and put some leads on the other side here. We got the positive up here. Screw that one down. Put our negative one in there. What it means. All right, we'll screw these down here. All right, so when I when I connect power on this side, I will have live leads on this side. But we're going to focus on uh, what we see here. And I'm actually I'm going to connect this to a multimeter, and I'm going to back you out here so you can see it. And we'll go ahead and connect the multimeter. See how accurate it is. Hopefully it. Hopefully it jives with our meter. Hopefully this is similar to our meter, the readout on here. All right, I've got 12 volts here. Go ahead and connect it. And it says 4.4 volt, and that's my output. I want to keep sliding off the table here. I'm going to turn on the multimeter. I got these stiff wires and I wish I wouldn't have. 
solid core wires. They're very stiff. They don't want to bend. All right. So 4.404, 4.4. Let's uh, rotate the screw. Now I've got 12 volts over here on the input. So we can clock turn clockwise and we can increase it. Let's increase it to I don't know, seven volts. Alright. There's not much in way of uh data sheet for this module either. At least I haven't found one. If you found one Give me a shout out because I don't know where it is. The only information I could find on this module was the information that's listed on the Amazon post. All right, 6.98 or 6.96 volts, 7 volts. That's close enough for me. So it seems to be pretty accurate. At least it seems to be for lower voltages. Let's do 9 volt. Let's do 9.3. 9.29 volt, 9.3. All right, so if we press this, we see 12.2 volts for the input. 9.3 volts for the output. And say we want to turn our display off. Just press this button right here. All right, so that's good I like it so far the next thing we're going to do is connect our servo motors to uh, both our buck converter and Arduino and you're going to like these if you haven't seen them these are lever connectors lever wire connectors and they can handle uh, 24 to 12 gauge wires so they come in really handy and what I'm going to do is use one for positive and one for negative or ground so let's go ahead and put the wires in here and I like these because you can screw them down they have little holes back here so you can screw them to a backboard or a platform and you can also hook them together as you can see there there's a little groove here this protrudes out here so you can uh, kind of fit them together my wires don't want to bend so that's pretty cool. I like that. So now you got your positive and your negative. All right, so our servo motors have three wires. They have the data line here, which is the orange one, and then the red is the power, and then the brown is the ground. So let's go ahead and put this output or data line, as like what I like to call it, and pin 8 and the power right in there the bad thing about this is it'll bend your metal leads or your metal uh, pins sometimes let's connect our second servo motor and we will connect the data line the output pin to pin 10 and the power line right here and the ground right here this also helps you keep them straight and clean I like it and now we will connect the ground pin of Arduino. We'll connect it over here as a common ground. Alright, there we go. There we go. Now we've got our external power. We've got our Arduino, which is capable of operating these, and our external power, which is capable of powering these. Right? For the Arduino, if you're doing this all um, by battery 
I like to just use a 9 volt. I mean, it depends on how long you need uh, to keep it powered. But a 9 volt like this, uh, 850 milliamp hour, it'll last a while, fully charged. So we can just connect our 9 volt. Hopefully that's charged. I haven't used that one in a while. There we go. All right, or you can just you can use uh, there there are a lot of different ways that you can power this. You can use uh, just a regulated wall adapter is fine too. Another way I could do this is use a 12 volt battery to supply power to the Arduino through the barrel jack or the VIN pin, and use the buck converter to step down 12 volts to 5 volts for the servo motors. Um, it, there, there's many ways you can power this um, for the long term. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in. Our battery. Let's see what we get here. We only wanted five volts. Yeah, so all right, five volt. Let's see if it works. First I need to unplug that, plug in the Arduino, upload the sketch. I'm uploading a simple sketch in Arduino IDE to rotate both of the servos 180 degrees with a staggered delay. And we'll plug in the battery. Unplug the computer. I've got one rotating in a delay of two seconds and then one a delay of one second. And that is how you can, that's one way that you can externally power your motors using Arduino and a buck converter. Be good if you set this before you actually turned it on. But uh, that would work, so I'm happy. If you're looking for some new Arduino material, check out this channel, Wayduino, on YouTube. He reached out on Facebook. We've been bouncing some Arduino ideas off each other back and forth. He is a fellow Arduino enthusiast, and I'm sure you'll find his videos pretty snazzy. Check him out, Wayduino. That's all I've got for today. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you again with another video.